Welcome to this episode of Game of Leadership, the podcast for curious leaders. I'm Paula Eddy Wilcox, and I'm delighted to welcome our guests for the second time, where we're looking at their take on the game and leadership aspect of the podcast. Who knows what we might find out, because we all look at this differently, and it's always so interesting to see what the guests have in store for me when I turn up, because we never plan this in advance. So I hope you're as excited as me. Let's get into it and I'll see you on the other side. Welcome to this week's episode of Game of Leadership, the podcast for curious leaders. I am absolutely chuffed to be joined once again by Alex Rosborough for his second episode. Welcome back, Alex. Thanks for having me. Oh, you're so welcome. And I think you're a glutton for punishment for coming back again. (laughs) (laughs) I love a challenge. That's how we develop leadership. (laughs) <laughs> oh, look at it. It's as if I scripted this for you, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> oh, hold on. I'm just trudging through cheese. Wait a Yeah, just trudging through cheese. <laughs> <laughs> oh, lovely. Well, so lovely to have you back. And for those of you that haven't heard last week's episode, please do have a listen. Um, because last week, Alex shared his leadership story and how he's ended up being um, the digital marketing expert he is today um, with his unique uh, take on leadership. And today we're going to be chatting about Alex's ideas around game and leadership. And I know that this is going to be different to anything we've we've come across before, um, you know, because Alex's experiences are different and unique and um, the way that he conducts his businesses, being on his third successful business in life for such a young man. It's uh, an impressive feat. So with with that, I'm going to ask you that golden question, Alex, game and leadership. What does that mean to you? Oh, that's a difficult one. No. uh, (laughs) Oh, come on. (laughs) First of all, I'd like to say that leadership is a game and i'll tell you why a a, a a perfect example of leadership at play is in sports okay we see we see great examples of self leadership and we see great examples of team leadership mm-hmm. and in terms of leadership itself that some of the most important aspects are team and social you know we must be able to create social bonds and we must be able to operate effectively and efficiently as a team. And the reason I speak about sports is because everyone can understand that in sports. You know, whether yeah. it's a team sport like football, for example, you know, there, there needs to be great social bonds between the players in order for them to communicate effectively. Um, it, even in sort of um, solo sports, you know, things like um, bodybuilding for, or fitness, for example, like I did. You know, there needs to be a really, uh, you need to really be in tune with yourself. You need to Mm. be able to be disciplined within yourself, you know, because motivation comes and goes. So if we rely on motivation, we never get anything done. We need to remain disciplined. So it's though it's in, in those, those scenarios, whether it's team sport or, or solo sport, we have this ability to develop leadership skills within ourselves. As I said, leadership is just self-leadership people follow you because you inspire them Mm -hmm. so in terms of the game of leadership as i said there's two important aspects for me one being you know the team aspect we've got to create we've got to be effective as a team so what is it that brings a team closer together it's that overcoming of challenge yeah if we have a team we overcome a big challenge together that strengthens the bond within the team you know, mm. we, we see that in war veterans. Veterans go to war together. They come back. They're, they're blood brothers, they call each other. And it creates a bond that's it's way beyond friendship. You know, yeah. they call it brotherhood. And you, you see it in trauma victims. You know, so I had a, a, um, a few traumatic episodes as a child. And one of them, one of the, the, the traumas I, um, I went through, um, a friend was involved with that in that with me. And me and this friend were inseparable for about two years. 
And it was that going through that trauma and surviving that coming out of the other end together creates this incredible bond. And I think that is what leaders should be looking to create within, yes. within their workplace. They should be looking to create scenarios that the team has to work together to overcome, including the leader. Not, I'm not mean just create the scenario for the team to overcome while the leader sits in the office. No, as oh, I no, said, no. The, the, the leader needs to be at the forefront of this. Mm. So I think that's extremely important that leaders are constantly trying to create simulatory scenarios. So they're not real, so the pressure's not on, but the team can work together and look to overcome these challenges to strengthen that bond. And I also say about the, the social side of it, I think it's important that there's there's a social element to teams in the workplace or, you know, any team anywhere. There needs to be that that social side of things, which is why, we you know, we have social gatherings or, you know, the Christmas do, because you'll find that, you know, the, the, the workplace will all go out for the Christmas do. But then we'll come back after the Christmas do and everyone's much more friendly with each other. Why? Because they've strengthened those social bonds through mm. that, that social that social interaction. Now, one thing I think, if you could marry those two together, that would be the ultimate exercise to develop leadership, both in a team and in a leader. If you could yeah. create some sort of challenge to overcome as a team in a social setting, you watch what happens to the dynamics within that team. They'll become mm. much more efficient much more effective, much more productive, and there'll be a lot less um, falling out. Because <laughs> you know, um, I work with a few uh, HR consultants at the moment. And one thing that I hear a lot in the HR space is that employee turnover is so high right now. Mm. And I think a lot of it has to do with lack of social bonds, lack of overcoming serious challenges as a team, and that lack of connection with the team and the leader, which can all be yes. overcome by those th those um, exercises that I've just covered. Yeah, and you know, you you raise a very interesting point there, Alex, in that um, you know from the from the other side of this, you know, and perhaps it's the HR side, whatever, um, or the the leadership development side for me, anyway um is that we've just gone through you know an, an incredible global pandemic that nobody none of us ever thought would ever happen in our lifetime you know you hear these things see sort of disaster movies and um it's all happening elsewhere but not to us well this time it happened to us yeah. and the first thing that goes is the budget for anything that you just talked about there in terms of the Christmas do or the the um, the team build aspect of it, where you take them away on an away day or a couple of days away, and they're given a challenge and they work through it together to do exactly what you just said, strengthen those bonds and really work through um, the strengths because you often get emerging leaders at that point as well. Exactly. Um, you know, especially if it's a sort of a, a slightly scary physical challenge let's say um you know it might be that you decide to go white water rafting together and that the boss is absolutely petrified of doing it yeah <laughs> whereas somebody in the boat really emerges as the new leader of the team in that situation you know it brings out different strengths in different people and exactly. being able to see that outside of the environment that you work in day to day um, is, is you know, you said it in the first episode, it is where some of the magic happens because we don't, we don't create that scenario in our day to day. Exactly. But of course, the other difficulty at the moment, and I'm experiencing it in one of the teams that I'm working in at the moment, we're all remote. Yes. So now, this is one thing I did want to touch upon. Yeah. Because I know I said, you know, the, the so, I mean, it, it's easy to, um, construct uh, scenarios and challenges within the workplace that we can overcome together as a team. Mm. But the social side of things is really difficult right now for a lot of people. But you know, it, it doesn't have to be face to face. Why not all get on Zoom, have a glass of wine and do a quiz? You know, it doesn't have to be face to face. Um, you know, although 
obviously it's much better you know we need we need to be around each other we need to feel each other's energy yeah. but in times that we're in now you know there's a lot of financial pressure on a lot of companies and ceos and directors um a lot of teams are working remotely so there's not that human connection therefore what i'm talking about strengthening those bonds is that it's, it's actually becoming weaker as a result but it doesn't have to be you know why mm. not why not block off a few hours of the end of every Friday and all the leaders get with their teams, sit down, have a quiz, have a laugh, have a joke, just be human. Don't talk about work because it, you know, be doing that over zoom is going to really help strengthen those bonds and people are going to feel like they're part of a family because that's all team is. It's family. You know, people yeah. who support me, people I support people. We, we care about work together to overcome challenges together. And, you know, I think we, we need we need that social interaction to be able to nurture that form of team dynamics. And yeah. uh, it, it, it has to we, we need that. So in the face of adversity, we're going to have to do it over Zoom. We, we have it has to be yes. done, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. Um, sitting in a team that, that works on teams as it is that we work on all day, every day, um, you know, they would argue the last thing they want to do is spend another session on Teams or Zoom to do something like that. But I would argue that the uh, the gain that they're going to get from that is um, is much greater. Yeah, than... and also, can I say as well that one thing I'm finding at the moment is that a lot of business owners that uh, I work with are spending a lot of unnecessary time on Teams and Zoom and Skype and things mm -hmm. like that because of the the underlying fear they have as leaders of underperformance and lack of productivity in their teams. Mm -hmm. So they're creating unnecessary meetings. And it's like, right, we're going to get together every Monday morning, every Wednesday morning and every Friday morning. But then we get there on a Wednesday morning and we're just talking about stuff that doesn't really add value to what people are currently doing. And it's just why are we doing this why not forget about all that and take that time that we're currently wasting on aimless calls that no one wants to be even be there and add that and and put that time together at the end of the week where we can get together and just have a laugh and a joke and be mm. human and you know have a glass of wine together you know let's let's do a quiz let's tell some jokes let's you know just be human not yeah. always trying to sort of make it work you know it's all about work it's all about project it's all about let's get this done let's get that done because mm -hmm. as a leader if you're constantly like that with your team then your team are gonna think that all you see them as is a you know a unit of productivity and I, th yeah. I know a lot of employees feel like that at the moment yeah i think i think you've got a real valid point there alex and um you know the issue that you talked about there with you know you didn't quite say it like this but meetings for the sake of meetings yeah yeah because that's the way we've always done it and we always have a wednesday morning meeting so it has to go ahead oh of course it has you know, to. <laughs> that has been a a, a a legacy issue way before yeah. the pandemic and zoom and everything yeah. else ever came into the equation um you know so with my team um you know i'm looking at, at the meetings that we do at the moment and seeing how we do it differently and and how we make it more interactive and more interesting and you know for example the team meeting they're the team i'm not <laughs> so why why don't they tell me what they want for the meeting yeah. yeah and if if it means that we don't have one of those meetings then we don't have one you know, so it's interesting when you turn it around the other way um, and you you give them the choices as yeah. to what they want to bring in and why why they want to use that time together um, yeah. in the best way. So, yeah, I you know, you're you're preaching to the converted, as they say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, one of the things I always talk about is just optimization. I mean, yeah. what 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 are we doing in business? We're trying to achieve a specific goal a specific milestone in growth or whatever it is, but we're all trying to achieve some form of goal outcome. Mm. So doesn't it make sense that we work as a team to think of the most efficient and effective way to reach that goal? Mm. But what I see is a lot, as you said, people having meetings for the sake of meetings. And it's not mm. just meetings. I see a lot of businesses 
doing specific tasks and you know exercises just for the sake of doing it because well that's how we've always done it mm -hmm. or that's how the world of business has always operated yeah. but i'm an optimist and I, i'm telling you i see so many businesses now l thinking yeah that you know we need to lead more with you know optimizing for productivity not so much doing things for the sake of doing things because we mm -hmm. tell ourselves oh we're having this meeting because we want to keep our team productive but it's not really because it's taking, you know, taking them away from producing whatever it is they're supposed to exactly. be producing <laughs> exactly and you you ask you ask um team members who spend their lives in and out of these meetings on a weekly basis they'll tell you that they leave these meetings deflated. Why? Because there's no purpose for the meeting. Mm. They're like, why are we, most of them will sit there thinking, why are we here? We know what we're doing. We know what we've got to get done. Why are we here? Oh, we're just checking in. Well, it will take five minutes on a Monday morning. We don't need an hour on a Wednesday morning and an hour on a Friday morning. We don't need that. You know, do, do we even need the meeting in the first place? You know, can we, is there a more efficient way of managing the team? Mm -hmm. You know, why not just forget about that, forget all that look at um, try and map out a more efficient way of mm -hmm. communicating within the team throughout the week and then have more of a social gathering have those meetings as a, as a social meeting so to speak because mm -hmm. with technology today we don't need these these meetings you know there's there's so many tools apps platforms yeah. we can use to efficiently communicate as a team to be as productive and efficient as possible without having to waste time in meetings and then leave those meetings for more relaxed communication. Mm -hmm. And don't get me wrong, there are times where you need it, especially when you're you're creating ideas and you're wanting to do team build oh, of course. or well, brainstorms, all of that. That's so, you know, that has to stay in that kind of, absolutely you know, where you get those real deep connections and you, you know, there's a need for you all to understand what you're working towards. Exactly. Um, you yeah, know, I don't agree. Yeah, exactly. But how many times have you been in a meeting with your team and thought, why am I here? I'm not relevant to this conversation. <laughs> you know, a lot of a lot of team members will feel like that. So it's about being efficient. Instead of saying, right, we're having a team meeting, but then it's only relevant to three team members in the room. You know, that deflates the other team members and they're like, well, these bloody meetings, you know, mm -hmm. and then when you propose a social meeting, they're like, no way. I don't want to be a part of that. No, yeah, yeah. You know, because yeah. it's, you know, people hate meetings, but why do they hate meetings? Because it's not relevant. It's not adding yeah. value to what they're currently doing. That's why. And it needs to add value to everyone present in that meeting. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, no. And I, I absolutely agree with you. You know, I, I just can't do meetings for meetings sake. So, yeah. you know, hence new team looking at the way we meet. And, you know, so that's a really exciting phase that we're in at the moment. But uh, yeah, the amount of times over the years that I've been party to meetings where I'm not the leader um, and it's just like, oh, great. Yeah. <laughs> you know, one, one of the, one of the That's an hour of my life I won't get back and I'm not a sarcastic <laughs> type of person, but really. <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I guarantee you were thinking, sat there thinking, do you know what? I'm in this team meeting with you guys. I could have had the, I could have done the work by now. <laughs> you know, yeah. you're, sat there, you're, you're, you're physically present, but mentally your head's on right now. I need to do this, this and this. I could be doing this with my time right now. Mm. But I'm sat here in this pointless meeting that's only relevant to Joe and Jane over there. You know, it's not relevant to yeah. me, <laughs> but you know that one of the I think one of the biggest challenges leaders need to overcome at the moment is that that way of communicating with the team that that the I call uh, it's, it's a strategy at the end of the day, the communication mm -hmm. strategy. How yes. do we open a channel of communication between team members that's efficient and effective and doesn't waste people's time, you know, that yeah. maximizes for productivity? You know, mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, we've got to keep our team happy. Uh, we need to keep them as part of that family so they mm -hmm. feel like they're overcoming challenges with their family. And, you know, if we're constantly calling them into pointless meetings that are not relevant to them, it's just going to think, well, you, you don't care about me. Yeah. You know, I love it, that concept of, of family, Alex, that you just talked about. Um, you know, there are there are people that have the school of thought that work is work. And, you know, they turn up, they do their job and they go home and they're not interested in any of the fringe benefits, should we say. Um, but 
the majority that I seem to work with, especially now that I'm older and wiser, um, <laughs> you know, they they tend to want to understand and connect. You know, that human connection piece is so, so important, um, you know, which which plays to everything you've talked about um, today in terms of the the sort of social aspect of the team um, game, if you like, and the the sort of challenges working through those together as a team, all of that without that human connection, that sort of baseline understanding of each other and respect and trust that you you know work hard to build within that team, that none of that's going to work. So you know as I've got older and, and wiser, I've been able to choose the teams that I work with um, and gone about that in a very different way because of the things that I've learned in my own story over the years. So it's interesting where we are now and, and having this conversation with you today and thinking about all those things. Yeah, I, th I think we're at an interesting time right now mm. where, um, the dynamics of the workplace are changing in a very big way. The way people approach um, projects in terms of leaders, um, yeah. that's changing massively. The way leaders approach their teams uh, is changing massively based on some of the things I've just touched upon. But most importantly, the employee, the way employees are approaching the job market is changing massively mm -hmm. as well. And um, I just think we're in, in a, a very exciting time where um the employees have the power i think yes uh, it's yes, definitely yes. an employees market right now um although you know we hear are you know that there, there's not many jobs there's not enough jobs out there in you know f for an employee um i disagree mm. i think that they're i i think people are becoming more aware of where they're spending their time and they're not willing to just happily give their time away for the sake of a paycheck anymore and i think the pandemic had a lot to do with that i think people going back to what we said in our first episode paula people spent time alone for the yeah. first time many people had gone their entire lives distracted and for the first time they spent time alone they spent time with their family they spent time doing things that are the most important what life's all about family human connection you know experiences mm -hmm. relationships and I think people start to realise, what have I been doing with my life the past yes. 20 years? You know, what have <laughs> I been doing? And I think people are really starting to see that, hang on a minute, maybe happiness isn't in this consumer lifestyle I've been living. Maybe mm. this happiness isn't in this chasing of money that I've been doing for the past 20 years. Maybe it's been in front of me all along. Yeah. And people realise that during the pandemic. And I think that's what has really given the power to employees for the first time. And I think that's going to lead to more remote working, more flexibility in terms of hours, because I don't agree with working uh, with, you know, setting hours. Mm. I agree in setting deadlines and goals. This needs to be done by this date. I don't care if you work two hours a day. I don't care if you work 10 hours a day, work with work, how, what works best for you, do what works best for you. As long as we hit that deadline, I really don't care. And I see a lot more leaders and employers taking that mindset. Yes. And I think that's really going to lead to more empowerment in the employee market. They're going to feel more empowered, more in control of their own lives and their own working lives, which is going to lead to happy and healthy relationships. However, yes. with that kind of flexibility, remote working, etc., we're presented with a new set of challenges. And that yes. is how do we nurture those connections, those human connections? And that's mm -hmm. when I, you know, when I was touching about, you know, just having a social a quiz or something and a glass of wine over Zoom or something. But it's going to take a lot more innovation for us to really think, right, how can we start nurturing those mm -hmm. social relationships off the back of these changes that we're seeing? Mm. absolutely gosh there's so many things in there that I, yeah, you know complex. each time you say something i've forgotten about the last thing and i'm on to the next thing i'm like oh, oh sorry what? sorry <laughs> no no it's great really great um absolutely fascinating listening to you and i think um you know yeah we've come back to that human connection piece again haven't we and and it's 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 just a fundamental part of human nature 
yes. to want to be connected with others. And as much as we've talked about that importance of alone time, um, it is, yeah, the pandemic has really shown us, highlighted again, how important that human connection piece is. Yeah, um, it's come back to me what I was thinking about as you were talking. Um, you know, we, had, we did hear that sort of the great resignation. Employer, yes. uh, sorry, employees are voting with their feet now. You yes. know, they want to um, have a role that gives them that freedom. You know, I certainly, as a leader, do not want to be breathing down the neck of my team saying, no. when you're here no. at five o'clock, did you stay till 5.30? No. What have you delivered today? You know, can you imagine? Oh, my goodness me. Not only would it make my life an utter misery of chasing, <laughs> it would make their lives a complete nightmare, you know? Exactly. And, and we've got all sorts of flexible you know, um, work uh, patterns um, in the team I'm thinking of. And it's it makes for a much more happy, productive, going back to what you were saying, productive environment. Yeah. Because people know that they have that autonomy in their own role. We're empowering them to do what they need to do, you know, and if they need to nip out for a couple of hours and they come back and do a couple of hours later, that's okay. And it's really funny how, and I know I do this to myself with, with, with one of my bosses, you know, um, I, I have, I have to go up for today, but when I get back, I'll log back on. He doesn't care. Yeah. Doesn't he care. knows I'm going to do the work. Exactly. Which he is cares great about the to be in. Yeah, that's exactly what you want from your leader, right? Exactly. To know that they trust you, that you've got that autonomy to do what it is you need to do. Exactly. And yeah. that you'll deliver the goods. Yeah. Now, if you weren't delivering and you were disappearing for a few hours here and there and what have you, that's a whole different game. Yeah, that's different. But the thing most people will deliver, you know, most the majority, nine times majority out of ten, do. people will deliver. And yes. not only will they deliver, they'll deliver to an exceptional standard. Yes. Why? Because you've given the freedom to do it when it best suits them. Some people like to work from 5 a.m. till 11 a.m. Some people like to work from 4 p.m. to 1 a.m. You know, yeah. so everyone works differently. Everyone it performs best at a different time. Yeah, and I this... think it's important that we give people that option. Yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, you just made me think of that sort of circadian rhythm that we have. Every one of us is different. Exactly. You know, some of us are the larks for a reason. Some of us are the night owls. I'm awful after about eight o'clock. You know, if I really have to work late gets to eight o'clock and I'm like oh no I can't do it <laughs> because I'm much better first thing in the morning yeah and in fact this was an I had an argument a couple of years ago with a friend of mine about this so um because I I'm in digital marketing I'm a big believer in you know working remotely and setting goals not hours mm. and um I said to a friend of mine oh you know whenever I work with my team, we set a goal, we set a deadline and um, we just have a, a touch point once a week just to make sure that everything's on track on both sides. So I'm not saying to them, oh, where are you up to? You know, have you done this? Have you done that? I'm saying, oh, where are you up to? I've got to this point. Where are yeah. you on? Where are you? You know, so it's like we're just sharing where we are, yeah. you know, and um, I said, I don't breathe down anyone's neck. And um, my friend, Dan, he was like, Daniel, his name is, um, he said, well, I, I need to be on top of my employees. I need to be because uh, if I don't, then I, I, won't, I won't get it done. And I said, just try it. Just just give them the deadline and say, look, this needs to be done by this point. Set some touch points. So maybe three or four, like depending on how long the project yeah, is, yeah, cool. set a time frame in which you touch, touch base and you have a, and you discuss where you currently are on your side, where they currently are on their side. And he said, they managed to hit the deadline, so I think it was within the third of the time that they planned to do so. And that was because they had the flexibility to do it when they felt most productive. You know, yeah. you can see that, especially in today, going back to what we're saying about being distracted, yeah. so many of us are distracted that we live in, we, our, our, our body clock has switched to sort of night owls. Most of us are up till early hours in the morning 
are not out of bed till sort of late morning, you know, nearly midday, most people these days. And, you know, to ask people when they're doing that on a Saturday and Sunday to come into work on a Monday morning at 8 a.m. and be at their best, it's just not going to work. No. It's not going to work, you know. So we're going to have, you know, up until maybe 1, 2 p.m., we're going to have a, a workplace full of zombies not getting anything done. And then we're going to be like, right, go, 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 go for the last hour. And there's going to be that much pressure that everyone's going to be unhappy, stressed out, and no one's going to get anything done anyway. So mm -hmm. it's just, it's not productive. We need to we need to be able to give people the opportunity to work when they're at their best mm -hmm. and that's when stuff's going to get done <laughs> yeah and I, you know it's it's music to my ears to hear this but um i think there's a way to go for certainly for bigger organizations yes, massively this is you know this is the beauty of having a, a smaller entrepreneurial organization because you can make those choices whereas a big you know, engines such as the AstraZeneca's of this world, that where I worked, 56,000 global employees. It's a bit different, isn't work it? <laughs> quite so quickly and yeah. efficiently and easily for, for such a change. Yeah, I think um, what we'll see, I think, Paula, what we'll see in terms of big organizations like that is we'll see a top down trickle approach. So yes. we'll start to see um, leadership teams, they'll start working like this. And then we'll see that trickle down to management teams. They'll start working like this and then it will start moving on to the sort of the, the lower down roles. Mm. So I think that's how it's going to happen, because yeah. um, it, I think that is probably the most efficient way to see that kind of change in a big, mm. big organization like that. So, yeah, um, yeah. but um, I, think, I think we're going to see big changes. The next decade is going to hope so. It's going to be a big, big big smack in the face for a lot of employers I think <laughs> I hope so but having said that um and I don't like to use but um that doesn't negate what you said previously about you know that's the way that we'll hopefully see the change trickle down um you know just observing the bigger organizations of the world as the pandemic calmed down and people were starting to return to the office um a lot of them not all of them, but quite a few are saying, <clears throat> you must be back in the office Monday to Friday, nine to five. That made my heart sink, you yeah. know, because it, it's like, have you learned nothing? I yeah. mean, yes, when the pandemic first started, there was a peak in productivity because people were so excited about being at home. And then they suddenly realized if I keep going at this rate, you know, I'm basically working and relaxing in the same spot in my home so yeah. the boundaries got merged and people had to relearn how to you know um Switch shut on. the door on the laptop at the end of the day at, at five o'clock or whatever it might be <clears throat> and not let that sort of bleed into their their personal time um so productivity then dropped um, and then it sort of, sort of came back up to a nice balanced level again. Yeah. So we've got plenty of evidence that giving people that freedom and allowing them to work from home, um, which means they can manage their other responsibilities in life more easily, um, does work. So I hope, I hope that that starts to filter through yeah um more so in I think, the future yeah i think the importance here though is not sort of saying one or the other i.e in the office yeah, or at home exactly. but more just people have a choice, choice. Mm -hmm. the more freedom the more choice people have the happier they are with anything in yeah. life so yeah. you, you get if, if, if you had an office and you said look here's the office guys you want to work here you can work here but if you want to work at home you can work at home the choice is yours the deadline is this date we need this done by this date yeah go absolutely really? Alex, because, wow okay well, this is amazing yes. i could do what if, one <laughs> yeah if i think back to my sort of 20s in the workplace i needed that office environment because yeah, that was the thursday and the friday night going out socially with everyone after work and you know i wanted that that whole workplace environment yeah. i'm in a very different place in my life now so exactly, yeah. you know parenting responsibilities and life kind of takes over being able to do that from home suits me great but yeah there were a lot of people during that pandemic period where we were forced to work from home that either couldn't or hated it 
Yeah. So you, you know, as I say, you know, I've previously said, I talk a lot about choice. You've hit the nail on the head with the employers. They need to offer that choice to get the most out of people, get the best. That's what we want. Exactly. We want to enable people to give their best. Okay. Um, we had a little uh, blip with tech there, as in the internet um, went down for Alex, but um, happy to say we're all back up and running now. So please go ahead with what we were what we were in the middle of there, Alex. Yeah, so what I was saying is, you know, we see this move in the way of working and, um, you know, more flexibility to employees in the workplace. And, you know, this is great, you know, for productivity, and, but it's not all about productivity. You know, it, it, about, as we were saying in the last episode, Paul, of those social connections, yes. you know, building a, te- a family, not just a team. And, um, you know, if we're giving so much flexibility that the team can do what they want, when they want, then we're, we're creating a disconnect in the team. We're not actually nurturing connection. So mm. it's important that if the more we adopt this flexibility in the way of working, we really look to focus on bringing the team together, get together in a social social setting and do our best to try and construct challenges that the team needs to work together on to overcome. Because, yeah. you know, with flexibility beco- comes distance between us. You know, as some people may be in the workplace, some people may be working at home. You know, we're, yeah. we're not all together at the same time. And in, without having to force people into meetings and them getting annoyed because they feel that they're just wasting time. You know, we need to construct some way of bringing people together, which is going to strengthen those social bonds and make mm. them feel more part of the team. And I think that's one of the biggest challenges that us as leaders are going to have to try and overcome as we move into this new way of working. Yeah, absolutely. And um, just just a, a question for you popped into my head there as you were talking, Alex. Um, you know, you've given us lots of ideas of, of things that, that I, th- I think you value in leadership. So if you could summarise for us, what are the, um, the things that you value most in a leader that you would work with? And perhaps actually those things that you value most about your own leadership? Self-leadership, and that is it. Um, as, as I said at the beginning, what is leadership? Well, leadership is just the ability to inspire others. And if we look at some of the greatest leaders that have ever lived throughout human history, they all have one thing in common. They don't actively seek to lead others. No. What they do is they lead themselves. And the, the fact that they can lead themselves, that inspires other people to follow them. That is what a good leader is, in my opinion. Mm. And I find that so many people in leadership roles today are actively trying to lead. Yes. What that does is that's making team members rebel against them because they're not leaders in that scenario. They're dictators. Yeah. And I think it's important that, that, that the number one quality is to ditch the idea of leadership and focus on leading ourselves. Just mm. focus on becoming the best version of ourselves because that's what's going to inspire others to follow. Yeah. I, and, you know, that's a really great view to have. And, and um, you know, ditching leadership is a radical idea. But, um, you know, when I think about you know, when I think about that, I think about that inclusivity aspect of leadership. And that's embracing, excuse me, all of the differences in your team, all of the differences in the people that work around you. Now my voice doesn't want to play either. We're having a good one today, aren't we? (laughs) Um, Embracing all of those um, differences in the team, differences in yourself, different aspects strengths challenges that we all bring and that beautiful eclectic mix that that makes um because if you apply some of the sort of um say sciencey kind of aspect to it and the um the profiling aspect to it you know um and you had do you remember um trivial pursuit and the little cheese wedges that fit in you know if you've got one of each different type in your team it's going to absolutely fly 
um, you know, if you if you've got all those different aspects um, and you're actively being inclusive and embracing all of that, imagine what's possible. I know, I know. And in fact, I think that's one thing that we're missing these days in a sense that people, a lot of employers struggle to find, to, to put employees in the correct roles. Mm. But going back to what I was saying earlier about constructing challenges, um, even simulatory challenges that the team mm. must work together to overcome. What happens in those difficult challenges is that people naturally rise to their strengths. So instead of us having to figure out, right, well, you know, your experience says you do this, so you're best suited for this role. Why not put ourselves in a challenging position where people rise to their strengths and we can clearly see what their strengths are? Mm. Then we can figure out, right, what is the best role for them in this project? What is the best role for them in this company? You know, because yeah. although their experience is in X, Y and Z, we've just experienced firsthand what your strengths are through this challenge we've just overcome. Therefore, yeah. there is, it's complete clarity. We know exactly what they're good at and what they'll be best suited for mm. within the team. Yeah, and that's exactly what I do when I talk to, to the clients about connecting with their purpose. We go into those challenges that they've had, you know, that, that bring out their strength stories, if you like, um, yeah. to find out what it is that you do best when you're when you're pressured and that you enjoy but one thing i will say alex is you know sometimes the things that we're best at aren't always the things we want to do <laughs> yeah, that's very true and in fact you raise a very valid point then there paula because i think you, you know you mentioned passion from an employee point of view there's got you you must have passion in what you do in order to, for it to be sustainable yeah and you, you know you, you, you hit the nail on the head with what you said there. We need we need to we need to nurture that passion, yeah. and we need to sort of. If we lose passion, then we're gonna we're not gonna we're not gonna stick around. And I think a lot of it's a complex one because there's so many there's so many factors at play when it comes to passion. It's not just mm -hmm. about enjoying what we do because you could you could enjoy what you do, but you could hate the team you work with. You could enjoy mm. what you do. You could enjoy the team you work with, but you could hate the leader, the leader that's yeah. that's that's in charge. So there's so many different aspects to that. But I think in order to to sort of nurture that passion in someone, they've got to have passion in the first place to be in that mm. role. But in order to nurture that, I think again it comes from flexibility and team. You know, we've got to value those social connections to know that you know we're passionate not just about the job we do but the team in which we're doing it with and we've we've got to give them the flexibility in order to grow that passion because if we say mm -hmm. right you're passionate about this but you can only do it between these hours on these days <laughs> i'm passionate i want to do it when you know i'm passionate about it. i want to do it when i want to do it so you know i think flexibility can plays a big role in terms of you know nurturing and growing that passion but it's a complex one, that is. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I couldn't agree more. It is complex, but it's, uh, yeah, passion for what you do, feeling inspired, feeling motivated. But another thought that just triggered as you were talking there, Alex, is um, people leave people. There yeah. have been, you know, a few jobs in my lifetime where I've left because of the leader. Yeah. And I would argue that they're not leaders. You know they weren't leaders so yes it's it's an interesting one that we could spend hours and hours and hours and hours on however we have come to come to our time for today's episode thank you so much alex thank you so much for um finding another way to connect with us when the internet let us down <laughs> i appreciate you having me on paula because yeah. these are really sort of complex issues that we're discussing you know, I know yeah. it's all based on leadership, but I think we're in a really strange time right now mm. where the, the meaning of leadership is really sort of evolving and people's understanding of what leadership means is evolving. But in yeah. a nutshell, I think it's important to remember that no matter what role we're in, we're in no matter what we're doing, we're all leaders. We just need to nurture that within ourselves. Yeah, we are absolutely on the same page there. The amount of times I hear myself saying, that you're leading yourself in your own life. That's really important. 
That's the That's fundamental really first place to start. Um, if you can't imagine yourself as a leader doing anything else. So thank you so, so much for your wisdom and your chatter today, Alex. It's been absolutely fascinating. And I can't wait to see you on next week's episode where we will be digging in to the pivotal moments that make you the leader you are today and how you've got to become so wise. <laughs> <laughs> it's my absolute pleasure i really appreciate you having me on oh you're so welcome and i'll see you next week we will see each other next week paula thank you for listening to today's episode of game of leadership the podcast for curious leaders i always think the game episode is one of my favorites because we get a real insight to our guests take on their ideas of how games and leadership fit together. Every one of them is different and um, just when I think there isn't another take that we haven't thought of or covered, one of our guests comes up with something totally different and unique. It's really exciting. Look, now it's your turn. See what you think, see what resonated with you most. And as always, I encourage you to reflect on what you've heard and see what that might mean for your leadership moving forwards. I'm Paula Eddie Wilcox, and this is Game of Leadership, the podcast for curious leaders. I really look forward to seeing you all next week. Bye for now. <laughs>